Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I made these shelves behind me. I did it without putting a screw in the wall or damaging the inside of my RV. I didn't have to worry about hitting a plumbing line or an electrical line, and I'm going to tell you how I did that today, and I'm going to show you how I made my bed so comfortable. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and behind me here you can see my new shelves. So I had a big wardrobe closet here that I never hung anything in, and I kept trying to figure out ways to store more stuff in there. So you guys probably saw before that I had some plastic bins in there, but I was just wasting so much space by not utilizing every inch in there that I could. So thanks to some help from my friends, Peggy and Carol, I learned how to make these shelves. Peggy was the pro that showed me how to make these shelves and Carol had some tools that I needed that I didn't have, so thanks you guys. But I wanted to utilize every inch of space that I could, but I was scared to drill any holes myself into my RV because I don't know where there's an electrical line or a plumbing line. And if the next people that buy this RV for me want to put it back as a wardrobe. I didn't want to damage the inside of this wardrobe closet. It was really no big deal. We got the measurements that we needed from inside the wardrobe. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a second and some problems that we ran into. But we went down to the lumber yard and we had them cut to our specifications for two by fours that go in the corners. And then whatever number of shelves you want, I wanted three and some really simple L brackets. What happens is when you put the shelf piece in, if it's cut to the exact right size with the L brackets, that middle shelf piece of wood presses up against the two by fours and it can't move. So you don't need to drill a hole into the wall to get it to stay, which I did not know and it works great. I'm gonna walk you guys through now exactly what we did. So we measured it out and we did have some problems because when we got back here to the RV with the lumber, it turns out that the curve on the outside of the RV also curves on the inside of my wardrobe. So the measurements that we took that we took from the bottom did not work all the way up. So look out for that when you do your measurements if you're going to do this. Luckily our friend Carol had a saw and we were able to take off an inch that we needed to on a couple of different pieces. Here's what you want to do next. You want to drill holes into the 2x4 where you're going to put your L bracket. Now this is just, you know, an L bracket where you drill a little hole in and then it goes in with a peg, but I reinforced it after this. I felt like I needed to going down dirt roads. So we started with just the L bracket with the peg going in and you're gonna need someone else to help you with this, at least I did, when we went to construct the shelves themselves because remember, it's not like the two by fours are drilled into the wall, right? So when you put them in, you have to hold all four of them to the sides and then get the wood up on the L bracket to hold it all steady, and of course it all falls down as you're doing it, so it definitely took two of us to get that done. But as I'm going to show you in some pictures now, we got the 2 by 4s up, we got the pegs in, we put the shelves in, and we got them in one by one. What I realized then is even with stuff on top of the wood, my shelves were going to be bouncing up and down because they were only laying on the L bracket. So what I did later is I took my remaining L brackets and I drilled them in upside down so that I had a metal arm underneath the wood and on top of the wood so it doesn't move at all. Then I didn't really like the look of it very much. I knew that I needed to put some non-slip lining on the shelves and so I got this black lining at the container store which was supposed to be self-sticky but I have to tell you guys that does not work on plywood. It did not want to stick. So what I did was I put it on the wood, I curved it around, and then I stapled it with a staple gun so that the front of it is not that raw wood. I was going to put on some bumpers which are those things in the front of the shelf that stop anything from coming off. But after I put the liner on, it worked so great, I decided I didn't need the bumper. But just for aesthetics, one thing I did do is I didn't want to see the staples up inside the wood, and I happened to have some black duct tape. So I went ahead and covered the edge of the shelf liner with this black duct tape, and then the top shelf 
which you can actually see pretty far back, I put all duct tape there because I didn't like the look of just the wood. Now later I may do something else with this, but that's what I came up with on the road with the stuff that I had with me. Because you know, RV is the mother of invention. I knew that I had to go to the container store to get containers that would cover every inch, and I'm telling you, I scoured this container store for like two hours before I found something that actually worked. So what I did was I found these big flat containers that I could use one big flat one and one long one so that I can just pull them out and see what I've got, which has worked great for me. What I did is, for me personally, I found what I like to do is roll up the clothes that I have because like when you're packing in a suitcase, it really makes a big difference in how much you can store inside. And I'll tell you guys, this is such a better use of space for me that I ended up being able to put my art supplies and some of my office supplies up on the top shelf and one of my drawers underneath that I was using for t-shirts, I was totally able to empty out and put some of my other equipment in. So. I was able to gain a lot more space just in the RV itself by doing this. And then for the bed. Having a good bed is really important to me, and the mattress that came with this RV is not comfortable. Actually, I tried to crawl across it when I first had it to shut off a light, and I ripped some ligaments in my knee. This is like my first month on the road. So it was really hard. Ever since then, I've been trying to find a cover. I first tried one of those foam covers that stays cool. Don't do that if you're going to be in a colder climate because what I found happens is that when it got cold at night in my RV, it would actually turn like hard as a brick. So the part that I was laying in would be the shape of my body, but then like I'd hit my elbow on another part like it was a stone counter. Totally didn't work. Then I tried one of those egg crates, but it just got like thin as paper. That might be because I have a Murphy bed, but they don't last. And... I tried another topper that was too big for me to shut the Murphy bed, and then I found this two-inch gel foam topper. Now, even though it says gel, it can be cut, so I'm going to show you guys that now. This is what it looks like out of the box, and people online said that it poofs right up as soon as you take it out of this plastic, so I'm hoping that's going to work. Let's see what happens. My bed is like an odd size queen. And so I got a queen. I just had to cut like three inches off of one side. I put it up and down in the Murphy bed. I've had it for a few weeks now. And you guys, it's like a cloud. I put a link for this below if anybody needs this. I think it was $62 for the queen. Of course, it's less or more depending on what size you get. But it cut like a dream. And it's got these little holes in it, which I think keeps it puffed up with air. And I never want to put up the bed now. I do work in the bed because it's just that comfortable. So if you guys need to make shelves and you don't want to damage your RV, then this is a great solution. I actually have another cabinet up front that's meant to hang jackets in that when I get a little time, I'm going to actually make that into a shoe cabinet using the same method. And the bed works great also. So if you've got an uncomfortable bed, this foam topper is a great one to have. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please do give me a thumbs up on the way out. If you like this video. It helps other people discover this channel and my videos. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I wish you all happy travels out there, and be free!